It's time for No Chinese Balloons Above Tennessee. Please welcome, from Tennessee, Senator Marsha Blackburn and host of The Sarah Carter Show, Sarah Carter. It's so great to see a packed house, too. Yes, Senator, indeed. thank you so much. And okay. two powerful women who know how to define the word woman. <laughs> yeah, I feel and very. Neither of us are biologists. Imagine that. And neither of us are biologists. We're yeah. okay. We're okay with that. I do want to clarify the title, though, of the uh, of this panel of this Q and A with Senator Blackburn. We want, to, we want to clarify it because we're going to be talking about human trafficking, the cartels, and beyond the Chinese balloon. Because it's far bigger than what I think we're hearing about in the news. Yes. And, and much more important than most Americans realize. Uh, we had the privilege, Senator, of being on the border together yes. uh, about a little, a little more than a month ago, when we were with Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith as well and Senator Britt from Alabama. This was part of a CODEL that you had planned and put together to get to the truth. And before we get to China, I think we need to talk about the border and our national security. I guess I want to start with what was your perception with this border trip? Because for the first time, I think, we had a victim who survived human trafficking. She had come in from Mexico. You had met an advocate, a former congressional uh, representative from the state of Mexico, Rosie Orozco, and ranchers in the valley that have been overwhelmed with the amount of people that have been traversing their land and coming into this country illegally. Yes, and I've been to the border several times and have continued to work to make certain that we secure that southern border. And I thought, you know, it would be great to go down and focus on the humanitarian crisis at that border because the people that are buying the lie of the cartels are coming not from one or two countries but from 176 different countries across that southern border into our country. They have been physically, mentally, emotionally, sexually, and drug abused when they get here. And to talk with these victims of human trafficking and drug trafficking and see the connection that is there between the Chinese Communist Party, the cartels that are in charge of that Mexico side of our southern border, and the way they are using human beings and drugs. Human trafficking has grown from being a half billion dollar a year business in 2018 to a 13 billion dollar a year business in 2022. And because of that, we wanted to look at these, the crisis of those that are coming in and the crisis that is being caused in our country with people that are being poisoned. Our children are being poisoned by fentanyl that is coming across this border. We had 69,000 people die of fentanyl death last year. It is the biggest killer of people 18 to 45 and is the fastest growing killer of children under 18. So focusing on the humanitarian side is so imperative. I think so too, and I think one of the things that was so incredible when we were down at the border, and I wish I could take each and every one of you with me do too. so that you could yeah. see it for yourself, you know, so that you could feel it and what is happening to these children. Let me begin, and I know that the Senator saw this, and I'm gonna ask you to, to talk a little bit about that. Every day, I get pictures from Texas Department of Public Safety of another child that they've either found in the back of a trunk, mm -hmm. on the floorboard of a car, hidden in a truck, children as young as two and three, 
some girls seven, some teenagers that are being brought into the country, not like you see on the news, not walking in and turning themselves in and with their families, not part of a guardian or anything like that. Children that are being brought into our country in droves to be sold to the worst of mankind, to the worst people that you can imagine. Shouldn't this be a bipartisan issue? Shouldn't it be a no-brainer? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it be a no-brainer to save these children? And I know this is why you did this, Senator. And I, I know you. And I know where your heart is. And I've seen the tears in your eyes when you've seen these children and when you've gone down there and seen the people. Right. Why is it that you it, can't get the legislation to move forward on these You instances? know, it is astounding to us that we cannot get bipartisan support on securing that border. Let me tell you something. There is nothing compassionate about Joe Biden's open border policy. <laughs> nothing compassionate about this. When you talk to these survivors that have been raped thousands of times, and you're going to hear more about this tomorrow, but just the way that they have been raped, when you talk to them about the drugs, the fentanyl, uh, the precursor chemicals are coming in from China. Right. And there are Chinese chemists who are making fentanyl in Mexico, and the cartels are pushing this across our border. When you talk to these that are ending up in our country that have been sex trafficked, that have been sold into modern day slavery, we should be able to stop this. Now, I've had two pieces of legislation. One would require people to, who come to the border with the child in tow, and they don't have documentation to say, this is my child, they would have to take a DNA test to prove that they are the parent of that child. I have not been able to get Democrat support for that. The second is one that Senators Hyde-Smith, Britt, and I did after we returned from our border trip that says, if you are a trafficker and you live in government housing or get government benefits, the day you are arrested, those benefits stop. There is no trafficker that should be getting government benefits. So we are pushing those pieces of legislation and pushing for bipartisan support. How many of you think Democrats should support this? 100%. We do too. You brought up a very good point, a couple of points, and I'm gonna move straight into China in a minute and those connections and why this is beyond the balloon. And why the, I mean, the spy balloon, of course, is very important. That's something that I think China purposefully, this is my opinion and I think an assessment of other intelligence uh, uh, agencies and uh, in, uh, intelligence officers that work for the United States, I believe that China wanted us to see that balloon. I believe that China purposefully lowered that balloon so that we would know that they were there so they could stick it in our face because they understand how weak the Biden administration actually is. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I believe there is a proxy war the Chinese have against our nation when it comes to drugs and utilizing the drug cartels as an entry point in the United States to target our American citizens and our children. children. Mm -hmm. Will anyone stand up to this? Will anyone speak out on this? And I agree with you, every Democrat should be on board in passing this legislation. And Senator, you saw it with your own eyes. You see it when you walk through cities. I was in San Antonio. There was a young man standing in front of the airport like a zombie. This was just this past week. I had to go get a police officer. He was hanging his head down. He couldn't speak. He was drooling on himself. He had been... You could see he was with fentanyl. He had fentanyl. He had injected himself. The police officer told me that man had been there for two hours. When I was in Philly, I saw hundreds of them in the streets, needles all over the place, children being guided by their moms through a bus stop around the needles. 
Why are we putting up with this? Why are our children becoming the victims? Yes. And I think that is so important. Our children are the victims of this. And it is up to us to protect our precious children. It is up to us to protect these future generations. It is up to us to protect our freedom and our liberty that is going to let our children dream big dreams and make those dreams come true. And the way that you have these drugs, that partnership from China uh, with the cartels coming in here, the way you see the Chinese Communist Party going after our children on social media and on TikTok. Right. And if your child or grandchild is on TikTok, you get them off of TikTok tonight. Tonight. Because the Chinese Communist Party is building a virtual you of your child online. They've got their face. They've got their keystrokes. They've got their search history. And they are using artificial intelligence and machine learning to drive your child where they want that child to go. So please, please, for the sake of your child, get them off this social media. One of the most, yes, absolutely, we should do that, absolutely. I think another area of importance and one that we should be focused on is the amount of land that has been purchased in the United States. Yes. Agricultural land, which is, by the way, a national security asset. We've seen over 200,000 acres of land purchase, and then that's just minimal. That doesn't yeah. include all the buildings and other infrastructure that the Chinese government has purchased in the United States. The fact that Huawei placed its 5G systems in our cellular towers in Montana. By the way, the same cellular towers are situated in an area where we have 150 nuclear ICBM silos. Right? Why? Why would we, why would our government allow that to happen? What can be done to stop this? I know there's legislation being enacted yeah. now, but this to me seems like a national security issue of the utmost importance. One that every single American should be aware of, and now we're only coming to hear about this. Well, and I think the China spy balloon really was the tipping point in this discussion because the Chinese Communist Party has been stealing our intellectual property. They have been spying on us, spying on our children. Uh, they have 350,000 acres of U.S. farmland under control of the Chinese Communist Party today. Now, I had legislation that would block the Chinese Communist Party from buying land adjacent to our military institutions, and we did not get one Democrat vote for that legislation. So, you know what? I'm pretty determined on this, and we are going to give our Democratic friends the opportunity to change their mind and support that legislation and protect our U.S. farmland, protect our food security, and protect our military institutions. Absolutely, because beyond, again, beyond the Chinese beyond the balloon. spy balloon, right, which was actually, again, an assessment that they did that purposefully so that we would know, so that they could taunt us. The thing is, is if they own our farmland, there is a definite national security threat there. Both our food, we've talked to farmers, our agriculture, the seed that they can plant, the ownership near our institutions and our installations. Right. It seems incredible. I remember when I first told Sean Hannity about the story, he didn't believe me. Sean was like, really? We wouldn't allow them to buy land near our institutions or put you know, Huawei 5G around our ICBM. He couldn't believe it. Nobody could believe it. In fact, it took me like a week to prove that it was actually happening before I could get that story on the air. Yeah. So your question is, this was the tipping point. The balloon yeah. was, do you think that was like, as much as the Chinese tried to taunt us, do you think they woke up a sleeping giant when they did that? I think that what the Chinese Communist Party does is look at Joe Biden. 
they see he does not respect our borders, so therefore they do not respect our borders. The Chinese Communist Party is intent on global domination by the time we get to the midpoint of this century. And they are not new at this game. As I said, they've been stealing our intellectual property. They are very invested in great power competition and building their military. They've carried out a genocide on the Uyghurs, persecution of the Tibetans and the Mongolians. They're taunting Taiwan every single day. They're taunting the Philippines. They are taunting the Pacific Island nations. They are coming in and moving into our homes with TikTok and some of these social media platforms and cryptocurrencies and the digital yuan. And what we have to say is we are the United States of America. We are the greatest military on the face of the earth. We value freedom, free people, free markets, and we will not let you take that freedom away. I, I agree. I know we only have a little bit of time left. And I guess these are my two questions. We're coming up on 2024. Yeah. What is your worst fear if we don't address these issues, if we don't address these crises that we're facing from China, that we're facing in our own Western Hemisphere with our border and with our neighbors? And what can be done to ensure that that fear does not become a reality? Well, first of all, we need everybody to be sure that all of their friends and family are registered to vote and yes. that they go vote. We are not going to win if we don't get people to the polls. And we have to make certain that not only the U.S. House, but the U.S. Senate and the White House are going to be held by Republicans. And it is going to be... Uh, you know, this is going to be a fight, and we have to show that we are going to fight to the finish, that we are going to defeat the Chinese Communist Party and their friends in the axis of evil, Russia, Iran, and North Korea, and that this country, our freedoms, our Constitution are worth that fight. We know you're going to be there with us. Folks, the great Senator. Marsha Blackburn from the state of Tennessee. Thank you all.